بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين السلام عليكم everybody today presentation will be about the effect of cholinergic anti and anticholinergic drugs on the cardiovascular system as we know that drugs and we have said that before drugs they have several actions some of the actions they are desirable and therefore they have clinical uses in this case we call them indication other actions usually they are undesirable and in this case we call them side effects some of the side effects they are contraindication they should be avoided in certain condition and they are known as contraindication Therefore, in the present presentation, inshallah, we are going to talk about the actions of cholinergic and anticholinergic drugs in comparative way. In other words, we will compare the action of parasympathomimetics on certain organs with those produced by the parasympathomimetics on the same organ. Today, we will discuss the action on the cardiovascular system as we know the cardiovascular system will discuss the action on the heart and the action on blood vessels and then on blood pressure so cholinomimetics as you can see I have divided the table into two parts the left part of the table is concerning parasympathomimetics while the right side of the table concerning parasympathomimetics because usually parasympathomimetics and parasympathomimetics they produce the opposite action on the body organs parasympathomimetics as we have discussed in the last presentation deals with the drugs which stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and we call them cholinomimetics this is another name for cholinergic drugs or parasympathomimetics they are also known as cholinomimetics parasympathomimetics are drugs which antagonizes the parasympathetic nervous system on the muscarinic receptor and therefore we call them as well anticholinergic drugs or cholinolytics okay parasympathomimetics of course we have divided them or cholinomimetics we have divided them into two major parts last in the last presentation into the directly acting cholinomimetics which act directly on cholinergic receptors like acetylcholine like betanicol like carbacol etc and the indirectly acting we talked about them these drugs which inhibit the metabolism of acetylcholine therefore increasing the level of acetylcholine in different organs in the body and we classify them into two main groups reversible anticholine stresses and irreversible anticholine stresses so this is the cholinomimetics the anticholinergics we have which are known as atrovin like drugs atrovin like drugs we said that they are classified classified into different groups according to their selectivity and to their structure activity so that's what we are going to talk about today we'll talk about the effect of cholinomimetics and cholinolytics on the cardiovascular system the first thing we are going to talk about is their effect on the heart as you know parasympathetic nervous system or the heart contains M2 receptor M2 receptors in the heart as we have discussed before 
they are linked to GK protein, where stimulation of the muscarinic receptor in the heart will lead to stimulation of G protein that will lead to opening of potassium channel. As we have said repeatedly before, potassium usually will rush out of the cell, causing hyperpolarization of the membrane. So hyperpolarization usually, we said, the membrane becomes depressed because it needs more stronger stimuli to be stimulated again, and this will lead to inhibition. Therefore, cholinomimetics or parasympathomimetics on the heart by stimulating the mTOR2 receptors, they will cause hyperpolarization of the myocyte and this will lead to depression of the activity, depression of cardiac activity. This includes depression of the SA node, which is the base maker of the heart, and depression of the SA node activity will result in decrease in the activity of this node, i.e. decrease in heart rate. This is known as bradycardia, as we have discussed before. Bradycardia. Okay? Also, the hyperpolarization will take place in the AV node, which is the node which conducts impulses from the atria to the ventricles. And depression of the AV node will result in block, or conduction block. Also, the hyperpolarization will take place in the atrial tissue, and this will result in inhibition of atrial contraction. Of course, the ventricles contain no muscarinic receptor. Okay? So now, this is the effect on the heart. Stimulation of muscarinic receptor in the heart by parasympathomimetics will result in hyperpolarization of the myocyte, and this will lead to depression of the SA node, decreasing the heart rate, producing bradycardia. Depression of the AV node conduction, producing what's known as cardiac block or heart block of different degrees. And depression of the arterial tissue, preventing or decreasing arterial contraction. Of course, this action usually will result in decrease in blood pressure as we will see later okay this action they have no therapeutic application they are usually side effects they are side effects and usually they are toxic because as we have said all muscarinic effect is graded that means the action of the muscarinic agonist on muscarinic receptor can be increased till we reach maximum response Therefore, this effect is most dangerous when parasympathomimetics, especially those which inhibit cholinesterase enzymes like organophosphate, organophosphate. Organophosphate is very strong inhibitor of cholinesterase, irreversibly inhibited cholinesterase, leads to accumulation of a huge amount of acetylcholine. As we said before, a huge amount of acetylcholine. Of course, acetylcholine will act on M2 receptors, reducing depression of SA node, reducing severe bradycardia, and as well it will act on AV node, producing a block of different degree, depends on the amount of acetylcholine. It can produce even uh, second or third degree block. Okay. So this is the effect of parasympathomimetic or cholinomimetics on the heart. It is a side effect and it has no clinical application. Okay? A second is the effect of parasympatholytic on the heart, which are parasympatholytic, which we call them atropine-like drugs. Atropine-like drugs. They block a mascarinic receptor. We expect that blocking the muscarinic receptor in the heart will produce the opposite effect. Will produce the opposite effect. So what will happen? In small doses, usually small doses, 
atropine will produce paradoxical increase in heart rate paradoxical means unexpected paradoxical increase uh, sorry paradoxical decrease in heart rate paradoxical decrease in heart rate heart rate paradoxical means unexpected uh, or not true decrease in heart rate i.e. they can produce bradycardia this is in smaller dose of atropine in smaller dose of atropine therefore atropine in small dose can produce bradycardia or paradoxical bradycardia they said that this effect is a central effect is due to central stimulation of the vagus vagus nerve as we have said and we know that the vagus nerve to the heart is inhibitory to the heart and therefore central stimulation of the vagus will result in bradycardia or decrease in heart rate okay that's that happens in small doses of atropine therefore if any person has got bradycardia and we give them atropine in a small dose we expect his bradycardia will become worse in a normal dose atropine will block muscarinic receptor in the SA node for example SA node if they block muscarinic receptor in the SA node they can increase the heart rate they can increase the heart rate this is known as tachycardia usually atropine in a normal dose produces slight tachycardia it's not very strong tachycardia and this tachycardia usually takes place in young people in young not in old people why because in young people they have high vagal tone they have high vagal tone therefore blocking vagus uh, vagus tone to the heart will increase the heart rate on old people usually atropine has little effect on the heart rate they have little effect on the heart rate okay because old people usually they have low vagal tone okay so this is atropine in a normal dose can increase the heart rate through stimulation of SA node by blocking the muscarinic inhibitory receptor okay now on AV node the same thing happens AV node atropine will block the muscarinic receptor in AV node therefore will increase the conduction through AV node will increase the conduction through the AV node which is a beneficial effect therefore atropine in a normal dose it can increase the conduction through the AV node which has a beneficial effect and has a clinical application it has a clinical application therefore atropine is used or indicated in cases where there is a decrease in heart rate and hypertension therefore atropine is indicated in sinus bradycardia sinus bradycardia especially the sinus bradycardia which is associated with hypotension and second degree or third degree block okay so atropine this is the first indication of atropine it is indicated in the treatment of sinuses one of the drugs of course it is indicated in the treatment of uh, sinus bradycardia accompanied by hypotension and, and second or third degree heart block in this case atropine is given intravenously in a dose of 0.5 to 1 milligram and this dose can be repeated every 3 to 5 minutes to a maximum dose of 3 milligram to a maximum dose of 3 milligram of course atropine but in this dose can produce different effects on the cardiovascular system other effects are the effects which includes the ventricular arrhythmia therefore this case the clinician should carefully weigh the risk bear beneficial ratio 
to make sure that atropine does not produce serious side effects so these are the effects of drugs on the car on the heart parasympathomimetics or cholinomimetics that are inhibitory on the heart while uh, anticholinergic or parasympathomimetics that are excitatory to the heart a second is the effect of these drugs, parasympathomimetics, acetylcholine-like drugs, or parasympathomimetics, atropine-like drugs on blood vessels. Blood vessels. We have to know, as a rule, as a rule, all parasympathomimetics, all acetylcholine-like drugs, they stimulate all smooth muscles. They stimulate, they produce contraction of all smooth muscles, except those of blood vessels, except blood vessel smooth muscles. Why? We'll explain that in moments. Therefore, acetylcholine-like drugs or cholinomimetics, they, they produce contraction of all smooth muscles of the body except those of blood vessels. Why? This was a mystery, actually, till about the mid-50s where Fergusot have discovered that the blood vessels, any blood vessel, as you know, blood vessels, they are covered by endothelium cover. So, blood vessels with its smooth muscle, the blood vessel are covered by endothelium cover, endothelium cells. They found that acetylcholine by stimulating muscarinic receptor, acetylcholine-like drugs, or cholinomimetics, which have muscarinic effect, by stimulating the M3 receptors on the endothelium cell, they cause the release of nitric oxide, release which is a local hormone, nitric oxide. This nitric oxide is very powerful vasodilator produces very powerful vasodilation or vasodilatation okay so all blood blood vessels especially resistant blood vessels like small arterioles that are dilated by cholinomimetics why because the cholinomimetics by stimulating the m3 receptors which are present in the endothelium cell will release nitric oxide this nitric oxide through the specific mechanism causes vasodilatation so in this case this effect or nitric oxide was discovered by a scientist known as Fergushot and Fergushot for his discovery uh, he obtained the Nobel Prize for Science Fergushot in his first discovery he called nitric oxide the endothelium derived relaxing factor endothelium derived relaxing, relaxing factor. Later, Fergusot himself and other, the Alfred Morad, they have discovered that this endothelium derived relaxing factor is not but nitric oxide, okay? So, cholinomimetics like acetylcholine, they contract all smooth muscles except those of blood vessel, okay? Why? Why they don't contract? Why they relax? smooth muscle blood vessel because they act on muscarinic receptor which are present on the endothelial cells releasing nitric oxide and this nitric oxide is a very powerful vasodilator so suppose that we remove this we remove the endothelial cover what will happen if we remove remove the endothelial cover suppose that we remove the endothelial cover. So what will happen? Acetylcholine, of course. In this case, will produce vasoconstriction. Why? Because there would be no source of nitric oxide. The source of nitric oxide is the endothelium. If we remove the endothelium, in this case, acetylcholine will act on M3 receptors in the smooth muscle blood vessel, causing its contraction and therefore vasoconstriction instead of vaso 
dilatation, okay? Now, this vasodilatation, especially of the arterioles, which are known as peripheral, uh, as the resistant blood vessels, will lead to decrease in blood pressure, will lead to decrease in blood pressure. This usually is a side effect, side effect. It has no clinical application. It is only a side effect. A side effect and a toxic effect if it is present in large amount because as we have said all the cholinergic effect on muscarinic receptor they are graded uh, response graded that means their effect depends on the amount or the dose of the drug so this this is most dangerous in case of organophosphate 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 as we have said they inhibit the metabolism of acetylcholine due to increase increase in levels huge levels of acetylcholine in the body these are huge levels of acetylcholine in the body will act on the blood vessel releasing a huge amount of nitric oxide which produce very severe vasodilatation and this very severe vasodilatation can result in severe drop of blood pressure and shock Okay, so this is the effect of parasympathomimetic or cholinomimetic on the blood vessel. On the other hand, atropine-like drugs, they have the opposite effect. Atropine-like drugs, they have the opposite effect. Sorry. So, what they will do, atropine? We know that any blood vessel does not receive parasympathetic supply. Blood vessels in the body, especially small resistant blood vessels, they receive sympathetic supply. Sympathetic. The tone in the blood vessel of all blood vessels in the body is controlled by sympathetic tone. There is no parasympathetic supply. But the blood vessels, they have muscarinic receptor. They have cholinergic receptor. They contain muscarinic receptor. Muscarinic receptor. Therefore, atropine-like drugs, they block because they are competitive antagonists to acetylcholine muscarinic receptor. They block the muscarinic receptor on the blood vessel. But they, not, they do not affect the uh, peripheral resistance at rest. Therefore, atropine have no effect, have no effect on peripheral resistance. Therefore, they produce no effect, no effect on blood pressure. Very little effect on blood pressure. Atropine, when given alone, produces very little effect on blood pressure this is this is logic why as we have said the blood vessels tone is controlled by sympathetic not by parasympathetic activity therefore atropine will not affect the peripheral resistance and will not affect on blood pressure so what it will do atropine like drugs they will block muscarinic receptor on the blood vessel and therefore they will prevent the action of acetylcholine prevent acetylcholine action on blood vessel. This has clinical application, as we will say later. Therefore, atropine-like drugs, they block acetylcholine action on blood vessel. This has very clinical application, as we will see later. This blocking effect of atropine on the action of acetylcholine on a blood vessel was discovered by an English scientist known as Henry Dale. Henry Dale was a very famous English scientist who discovered that atropine can block the effect of acetylcholine on the uh, blood pressure. Of course, he used experimental animal. He used rats, I think. So Dale, what he found, he found that acetylcholine, if it's given in small dose, like 3 microgram, it produces decrease of blood pressure. 
produces decreased blood pressure. This is known as a depressor response. Depressor response. He found that by increasing the dose of acetylcholine, he given acetylcholine intravenously, of course, by increasing the dose to 30 microgram, or sorry, or to 50 microgram, he found that the, this decrease in the blood pressure is increased, of course, because it is a graded response and accompanied by bradycardia. Bradycardia. Dale, when he given the animal a specific dose of atropine, and he given the animal again the same dose of acetylcholine, which is 50 microgram, he found that the depressive response di disappeared. On the contrary, there was slight increase in blood pressure. Okay? Now, what he did, instead of giving 50 microgram, he gave 100 times this 50 microgram dose. He gave 5 milligram, which is 100 times 5 milligram, which is 100 times the 50 microgram dose. He found that the depressor response was reversed into a breast response of biphasic nature. So in this case, acetylcholine in large dose, 5 milligram, which is a huge, 100 times the normal dose, produced in, after atropine, of course, produced a breast response. This is known as a breast Pressure means not increase. Pressure means increase in blood pressure of two phases. Two phases. Phase one and phase two. Dale explained this phenomena. He said that phase one, uh, phase one, he said it is due to stimulation of a nicotinic receptor in the ganglia. We will explain that in details. Nicotinic receptors in the ganglia. While phase two, or the second rise of blood pressure due to the release of noradrenaline and adrenaline from adrenal gland, from adrenal gland. Okay? So Dale, when he injected high dose of acetylcholine after atropine, Acetylcholine produced increase in blood pressure. This increase in blood pressure was biphasic. He explained phase one to be due to nicotine, uh, stimulation nicotinic receptor in the ganglia, while the phase two is due to stimulation of the release of adrenaline from the adrenal gland. As we know, as we have said in last few minutes, that the blood vessels receive sympathetic outflow sympathetic outflow sympathetic means acetylcholine is released in the ganglia when central effect comes when it reaches the ganglia it releases acetylcholine acetylcholine will act on both ganglionic in the post ganglionic cell body nicotinic receptor and this will lead to propagation of impulse and the release of noradrenaline from the nerve terminal of the post ganglionic sympathetic nerve fiber. Of course, noradrenaline, it will act on alpha-1 receptor, which is located on the blood vessel, and this alpha-1 stimulation will lead to vasoconstriction. This is known, known physiological fact, vasoconstriction. Okay? Now, when they'll give the, the high dose of acetylcholine, acetylcholine high dose, which is 5 milligram, acetylcholine has both effects, as we know. It has a nicotinic effect, and it has a muscarinic effect. Now, muscarinic effect, they are blocked by atropine, pretreatment with atropine. So what is left? The nicotinic effect of acetylcholine. Therefore, acetylcholine will stimulate this a huge amount of acetylcholine will stimulate the nicotinic receptor present in the ganglia leading to release increase the release amount of noradrenaline 
from the adrenergic nerve terminal leading to vasoconstriction and increase in blood pressure this is the first phase in the first phase of the pressure response of acetylcholine after atropine is due to the release of noradrenaline from the adrenergic nerve terminal at the blood vessel this is the first the second phase which we said is due to the release of adrenaline from the adrenal medulla the adrenal medulla as you know it contains it releases adrenaline and noradrenaline and adrenal medulla contains nicotinic receptor this nicotinic receptor will release will increase the release of adrenaline from the adrenal medulla adrenaline the same thing will act on alpha 1 receptor adrenaline released the medulla will act on alpha 1 receptor on blood vessel producing vasoconstriction increasing blood pressure this is very famous phenomena known as DALE phenomena therefore acetylcholine it is a depressor it decreases the blood pressure but if it is given after atropine in enough dose it can increase blood pressure it can increase the blood pressure this increase in the blood pressure is biphasic phase one is due to stimulation of a nicotinic receptor in the ganglia and phase two is due to the release of adrenaline from the adrenal gland okay okay so this is very famous pharmacologically and it is known as their phenomena or their reversal their reversal so atropine in this case it has very important clinical application atropine it can be given in case of shock due to organic phosphates this is actually due to organo phosphates Organophosphates, as we have said, they are irreversible. Anticholine stress, which leads to accumulation of a huge amount of acetylcholine, and this huge amount of acetylcholine will produce severe vasodilatation and therefore shock. So in this case, atropine is life-saving. Why? Because it will block, will it block acetylcholine muscarinic receptor on blood vessel preventing the action of acetylcholine in blood vessel and therefore can improve improve blood pressure and as well as we have uh, explained before in cardiac effect it can improve cardiac function as well okay in this case the same thing atropine is given by intravenous injection okay so these are the major action of drugs which act on the cholinergic system so in summary what we have discussed up to now we said that we said that cholinomimetics which are cholino Myemetics, which are parasympathomimetics, they are depressant to the heart. Okay, they can depress the heart function and they can produce heart block and decrease the heart rate by by inhibiting the SA node they decrease the heart rate and by blocking the AV node they produce heart block okay in high, in high enough dose they can produce severe hypotension which can lead to shock both these effects they have no clinical application and we have said there are side effects usually and toxicity due to uh, high doses of cholinomimetics like organophosphates on the other hand anticholinergic which we call them 
Bara Sympatholytics Bara Sympatholytics or atrobin like drug atrobin like drug we said that they can increase the heart rate and conduction by blocking cholinergic receptor and that's why they have very clinical application and treatment of sinus bradycardia okay and when we said that these drugs they block the effect of acetylcholine on blood vessel block acetylcholine action on blood vessel therefore they have very important clinical application and treatment of shock due to cholinomimetic shock treatment in, in toxicity with cholinomimetics these are very briefly the principles of the actions of of parasympathomimetics and parasympatholytics on the cardiovascular system so in the next lecture inshallah we'll talk about the actions of cholinergic drugs whether they are parasympathomimetics or parasympatholytics on different smooth muscles of the body وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين I would like to thank you very much for your attention if you like my presentation don't forget to press like and don't forget please to share with friends please subscribe to my channel wish you all the best luck والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله